past few months leading up to this wedding, there has been excitement, happiness, joy, and anticipation of all the things to come. There's also been stress, disagreement, arguments, and other less than happy moments. I don't think that's particularly unique to our wedding as probably most who've gotten married can attest. I know there is a, life, a full life ahead of us, a life full of happy moments and struggles. Through all of it, I kept thinking one thing, let's just make it to April. Today we're getting married and leaving to go straight into our honeymoon. And amid all the chaos of the wedding planning, bookings for our trip this week, I knew that all I was really looking forward to is what comes in April. After everything is said and done, I know our life. Our life begins in April. April is when we have each other. Through every happy moment and every stressful moment, I've always known that we will have April. So my promise to you is this, no matter what we're going through in life, we just have to make it to April. April represents when we go back to the foundation of what our marriage is, which is built with God at the center as the one who binds us together. It's a reminder to always remember the love we have for each other, which is the reason for all of this. After the honeymoon phase is over and each disagreement has been settled, I always want to remember that I'm building a life with you for us to walk in the plan that God has for us. I love you so much, Aunt Esther, and this is the life that I want to walk with you. I've heard it said before that true love and strong relationships are not found, they are built. When I think about how to describe our relationship, I think of that because of this. I've always been a huge romantic. I was always obsessed with falling hopelessly in love, and I longed for someone to fall hopelessly in love with me. At the time, I didn't even understand what that truly meant. When you and I started talking and then began dating two weeks later, I found a friend. Just a friend, but a dear friend. And right away, I realized that there was something special about him. He was my friend, and my boyfriend, but it was him who taught me how to trust, who helped me to be confident and to embrace my awkward quirks that I was so embarrassed of. It was he who spoke so passionately about God and the Bible that they came to life for me, and who made me laugh and find a joy in life that I hadn't felt in for a very long time. When life got rough, as it always does at some point, he showed his true colors by standing beside me through it all. Two years later, I stand here today, not only with my dear friend, but with the man I fell hopelessly in love with. Neil, I made a choice a long time ago to choose you, but that's not a choice I only made once. I vowed to choose you every day, in the happy times, in the sad, the good, the worst, and the best of times. I promise to strive each day to become the woman and the wife that God wants me to be. My role as your wife is to lift you up, not tear you down. I promise to encourage you and to supply your needs in any way that I can, whether it be spiritually, physically, emotionally, or mentally. I promise to be a safe place for you in this crazy world, a place of trust, respect, love, encouragement, wisdom, and support. I promise to always seek to keep God at the center of everything because I know that if we always do that, we will not only survive, but we will thrive. I promise to cook and prepare food for you that is both delicious and nourishing, especially mac and cheese. <laughs> Which is neither of those. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Neil, prometo aprender español para que puedas Apelarme en código. Y también, <laughs> y también para que podamos enseñar español a nuestros futuros hijos. <laughs> Te quiero con todo mi corazón, hoy y para siempre, mi amor.